June 17, 2010. Natanz Nuclear Facility, Iran. An Iranian technician walks through the underground halls of one of the world's most secure facilities. Behind reinforced concrete walls, 8,700 centrifuges spin uranium at 63,000 revolutions per minute. Each machine is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Together, they represent Iran's nuclear future. But something is wrong. Over the past months, centrifuges have been failing at an alarming rate, not just breaking down, destroying themselves, spinning so violently they tear apart from the inside. The monitoring systems show everything is normal, but the machines keep dying. The technician doesn't know it yet, but he's witnessing the world's first act of cyber warfare. A digital weapon has infiltrated the most isolated nuclear facility on Earth. It has one mission, destroy Iran's nuclear program from within. This weapon has a name, Stuxnet. What happened next would change warfare forever. But first, someone had to build the perfect digital weapon. Someone had to find a way to make computer code as deadly as a cruise missile and someone had to get it inside a facility that wasn't even connected to the internet. This is the story of the most sophisticated hack in human history. To understand why Stuxnet was necessary, we need to travel back to 2002, when everything began to unravel. That year, an Iranian opposition group revealed the existence of two secret nuclear facilities, Iraq and Natanz. The revelation sent shockwaves through intelligence agencies worldwide. Iran had been building a nuclear program in complete secrecy for nearly two decades. The Natanz fuel enrichment plant became the crown jewel of Iran's nuclear ambitions. Built 25 feet underground and protected by layers of concrete and steel, it was designed to be impenetrable. Inside its halls, Iranian scientists installed thousands of IR-1 centrifuges aluminum tubes that spin uranium hexafluoride gas to separate the uranium-235 isotope needed for nuclear fuel. Here's what made Natanz so dangerous. Each centrifuge could enrich uranium from its natural state of 0.7% uranium-235 up to the 3 to 5% needed for nuclear fuel. But keep enriching, and you reach 90% weapons-grade uranium. The difference between nuclear power and nuclear weapons was simply a matter of time and quantity. By 2007, Iran had 3,000 centrifuges operational at Natanz. By 2009, that number had grown to over 8,700. International inspectors watched helplessly as Iran's nuclear capabilities expanded exponentially. Economic sanctions had failed. Diplomatic negotiations had stalled. Iran's nuclear program was accelerating toward a point of no return. Intelligence analysts in Washington and Tel Aviv faced a nightmare scenario. Military strikes could set back Iran's program, but the consequences would be catastrophic. Iran would likely withdraw from international treaties, accelerate weapons development at hidden sites, and potentially trigger a regional war that could destabilize global oil supplies. There had to be another way, a way to sabotage Iran's nuclear program without dropping a single bomb, a way to destroy their centrifuges, without anyone knowing how or why. The answer would come from an unprecedented collaboration between American and Israeli intelligence agencies. Together, they would create something that had never existed before, a cyber weapon capable of physical destruction. But building such a weapon would require solving problems that seemed impossible. The challenge was staggering. How do you attack a facility that's completely isolated from the internet? How do you destroy machines you've never seen, controlled by systems you've never accessed? The answer began in a classified program codenamed Olympic Games. The operation brought together the NSA's elite cyber warriors with Israel's Unit 8200. Together, they began developing what would become the most sophisticated piece of malware ever created. Through espionage and intelligence gathering, they mapped Iran's nuclear infrastructure in extraordinary detail. They discovered Iran was using Simon's programmable logic controllers to manage their centrifuges, industrial computers that regulated speed and pressure. Most importantly, these systems were completely isolated from the internet on air-gapped networks. The solution was elegant and audacious. If they couldn't reach the target through the internet, they would make the target come to them. Stuxnet was designed as a worm that could spread through USB drives. But this wasn't ordinary malware. 
the worm exploited four zero-day vulnerabilities, previously unknown security flaws worth millions of dollars each. Using four in a single weapon was unprecedented. To avoid detection, Stuxnet used stolen digital certificates from legitimate companies like Realtek. These certificates made the malware appear to be legitimate software updates to any computer system. Stuxnet's true genius lay in its precision targeting. The worm activated only when it detected a very specific configuration. Siemens controllers managing particular centrifuges spinning at exact frequencies. Without this precise setup, Stuxnet remained dormant. Getting Stuxnet into Natanz required human assets. Through unwitting accomplices and potentially recruited insiders, USB drives containing the worm found their way into Iran's nuclear network. The moment Stuxnet infiltrated Natanz, it began unprecedented sabotage. The worm recorded normal centrifuge operations for weeks, learning their behavior patterns. Only then did it attack. The sabotage was diabolically subtle. Stuxnet periodically commanded centrifuges to speed up or slow down beyond normal parameters, sometimes dramatically, spinning far faster than design limits, other times subtly, just enough to disrupt uranium enrichment. The physical effects were devastating. Centrifuges vibrated excessively, wearing down precision components. Some tore themselves apart, aluminum rotors disintegrating at high speed. But Stuxnet's masterpiece was deception. While sabotaging equipment, it hijacked monitoring systems, feeding false data to operators. Engineers saw normal readings while their machines destroyed themselves meters away. For nearly two years, this digital sabotage continued undetected. Iranian scientists couldn't understand why equipment kept failing. They never imagined computer code was systematically destroying their nuclear program. The destruction at Natanz was catastrophic. Intelligence assessments revealed that Stuxnet destroyed approximately 1,000 of Iran's 6,000 operational centrifuges, but the damage extended beyond simple destruction. Constant equipment failures forced Iranian technicians to operate remaining centrifuges at reduced capacity. Uranium enrichment rates plummeted. Iran's nuclear program, which had been accelerating rapidly, suddenly stagnated. Intelligence analysts estimated Stuxnet set back Iran's capabilities by one to two years, potentially preventing nuclear weapons development during a critical period. But in 2010, Stuxnet's creators made a fatal error. An updated version contained a programming mistake that caused aggressive replication. Instead of remaining contained, Stuxnet spread across the internet, infecting over 200,000 computers worldwide. The discovery came from Belarus. Sergei Ulysen, a security researcher at Virus Blockada, noticed strange behavior on company computers. He found malicious code unlike anything encountered before, sophisticated programming using multiple zero-day exploits but designed to interact with industrial control systems most computers never encountered. When Ula Sen published his findings, Symantec researchers began analysis. What they discovered shocked the cybersecurity community. The malware clearly originated from a nation state, requiring millions in development costs and expert programming teams. More importantly, it contained detailed knowledge of specific industrial systems, suggesting extensive intelligence operations. As researchers investigated deeper, they found evidence targeting Iranian nuclear facilities. Stuxnet contained references to dates and locations corresponding to Iran's nuclear program, programmed to activate only with Natanz's exact centrifuge configuration. The revelation marked history's first cyber weapon, causing physical infrastructure destruction. Iran's response was carefully measured. President Ahmadinejad acknowledged malware effects while downplaying damage. Admitting Stuxnet's full success would have devastated Iran's international position. The discovery transformed international relations. Cyber attacks evolved from theoretical possibilities to demonstrated weapons capable of real damage. Critical facilities worldwide suddenly faced vulnerability from adversaries who might never physically approach their targets. Stuxnet represented a revolution in warfare, requiring appreciation of extraordinary technical and strategic challenges overcome by its creators. The precision engineering was unprecedented. Unlike traditional cyber attacks causing broad digital disruption, Stuxnet functioned as a digital guided missile, distinguishing between legitimate industrial facilities and its intended target with surgical accuracy. The attackers mastered nuclear physics, mechanical engineering, and industrial control systems, 
while crafting malware surviving on isolated networks for years. The intelligence requirements were staggering, demanding detailed knowledge of Iran's nuclear facilities including equipment specifications, network configurations, and operational procedures. This intelligence required extensive human and technical espionage operations, coordinated across multiple agencies. Strategically, Stuxnet achieved what diplomatic pressure and economic sanctions could not, physically degrading Iran's nuclear capabilities without massive military risks. The operation proved that small programming teams could accomplish what previously required large-scale military campaigns. Most significantly, Stuxnet established new warfare paradigms. It demonstrated that computer code could equal conventional explosives in destructive potential while opening entirely new conflict domains. The principles pioneered by Stuxnet continue shaping international conflicts from Russian infrastructure attacks to Chinese infiltration operations. By proving code's equivalence to conventional weapons, Stuxnet fundamentally redefined warfare itself in the digital age.